I wish there was a, a very intensive class like this that was so in depth. And no, we're not the only one. No, I'm seven. talking about just the business side. Of it. I'm telling you, there was no such training to advise you on such, and you just had to wing it. Just, I said it about five times this morning. The stuff that Jed presented this morning, I feel so bad that I sat there and showed goofy YouTube videos. It could have been done any time, or I could have just said, "Go Google Rob Nash Aquaponics." You guys needed to hear what Jed had to say this morning. You could have lived without my goofy video. I didn't realize we were so tight on time and he had such a long presentation. That's where I talked him into, uh, they're going to print out his presentation and nice. hand it to you. You may not get his expanded view on each point, but he's got a hundred points of interest you have to know. So we're going to get that to you tomorrow. And I was supposed to surprise y'all. We decided to include my how-to. AP 300. So you'll get to do a meet. It's a. It's. I usually charge 75 bucks for a two-hour class and hand this thing out. But it's got the parts list and the step-by-step how-to and all that. That way you can go home and build a nice media bed if you want. The, the one of those like I was showing you I did. And it's the AP 300, the one that I showed you. You can use the indexing valve and add the other three beds. Yeah. To stretch the system, you can still go from either all four of your media beds through a wrap. Or you can just take three of your media beds back to the tank and one of your media beds through the rack. It's a perfect place to start. And the cool thing about the AT300 is it's not a joke size. That's actually micro farm size. And you see how I stretched it? You could just do multiples of those um, instead of one big giant tank. And when you start looking at your cost, it's actually cheaper to build multiple small ones sometimes than a bunch of big ones. So, I mean, what, si what size was that greenhouse that you built? Was this, it was bigger than this, right? Well, the one I was showing the photo yeah. of is 30 by 96, and that's considered a standard one bay. Now, let me add this. Crop King, Nelson and Page, Rob Nash, and most anyone who knows we're talking about will tell you that the history has shown 5,000 square foot is the minimum space you can expect to make money on this business takes 5,000 square feet or two of those single bay units I was talking about to wind up with 4,000 square feet of grow space. Right. That way you can harvest 1,000 square foot per week. That way you have a Except four a month. week rotation. Right. Of, well, theoretically all well. year long. And that's how you need to start your mindset on your math and on your figures. Say, okay, Rob said I need to be harvesting a minimum of 1,000 square feet a week. How many lettuces is that? It's roughly two and a half heads of lettuce per square foot. Some people poke them in and get three. Some people go big and get one, whatever. Call it two and a half heads. Um, I think it's something like 3,500 some odd plants per thousand square feet of space, whatever. It's a lot of plants in a small amount of space. So you need a minimum of two greenhouses to make a commercial sustainable living. Now to reach into it with one greenhouse, which would be literally maybe five or ten foot wider than this and two and a half times this length, you could have your first 1,000 square feet of growth space, but you can only harvest one fourth of that at a time. Right, so 250 you square feet. That, yeah. you maybe be able to do six, seven hundred heads a week. Hey man, if you're getting a full two fifty three dollars a head for seven hundred heads a week, that's not a bad start. So. We'll talk more that's, about that. That's yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest. He, he said has he wasn't. more lettuce growing in his operation than I do. Yeah. Yes. I have two 8 by 36s which honestly, I believe that's what this is collectively is. One, two, three, four, five, six. They are 15 inches okay. by uh, 48 foot long or 36? Yeah, 54, 54. 54, okay, so his are longer than mine considerably. But I dare say Jed has more lettuce growing and more wrap space than I do. Mine, remember, is half media bags. Yeah. yeah. Kale, shard, and basil are like three new main. I know this is going to sound weird, but I mean, sustainably, could you grow wheat or other big products? or Absolutely. You don't want to grow ganja on a wrap if anything grows in there. No, no, no. <laughs> Wheat, not wheat. Oh. wheat. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. You're in the wrong county to be talking about growing wheat. <laughs> no, uh, wheat is not considered a wetlands yeah. deal, right? It's, it needs a dry yeah. period to do its Sorry. thing. So, you could do rice. Plus, you yeah. got to think about it. Even if you could get wheat planted in here in a fashion, it's, it's yeah. here, it's, it falls under the don't waste your valuable real estate. You want to grow wheat, go outside and grow wheat with wheat growth. Okay. Come in here and grow lettuce where the lettuce grows, where the where the lettuce won't grow. Match it to the environment. Right, exactly. And then match it to the crop types. 
don't bother growing non-leafy greens in a leafy green machine. You want to grow media, you know, flowering plants and long, long crops like tomatoes and whatnot? Grow those in a media bed. Grow your fast-growing lettuces and herbs in a wrap. What about basil? Basil will do just fine. The problem is, is I'm a real fan of cut and come again, where you cut it one week, come back a week or two later and cut again. Well, those basil plants, as you saw, get really unruly. In a media bed, I space them out further. In my wrap, I don't want to modify my boards to space them as far as they deserve to be, so they get unruly. Now, if you're going to grow basil in a wrap, you should just start plants, eight weeks later, harvest plants, and just keep them rolling. Then you outrun the bugs, you outrun disease, you don't have issues. It really is the preferred method. At first, you say, yeah, says the seed company who wants me to buy more seeds. You play with both styles week after week after week after week. And again, it's all about you and efficiency. Trust me, it's actually easier just to cut a whole plant and bag it up and let that one go. I like cut and come again. That's, those are things you just have to kind of decide for yourself. I'd say start with the cut and come again. Yeah, and it's less seeds to keep up with. So you kind of trade your chore being, I got to keep these plants manicured and maybe the bugs off of them and make some sacrifices there but maybe that's because you don't have enough seed room or help to do it otherwise. So those are two spectrum, too far into the spectrum to accomplish the same goal. Think of it that way when you start setting stuff up. If you're pinched for space, you're going to have to work a little bit different. If you've got lots of space, you can accommodate different needs. Better.